Hi everyone, this is Chris Ellery in uh, southeastern Pennsylvania. Uh, so I am. I want to do a video here today about uh, plotting an interactive um, cor choropleth map uh, with Plotly and uh, GeoPandas. One of the biggest problems I've had over the past few days is that I wanted to plot out a uh, choropleth map um, and I had some data for municipalities um, and I, I couldn't seem to get the, the map to read in. And what was going on was that Plotly um, had to read, was all the tutorials I had were reading from a specific Plotly uh, built-in map for counties. And it wasn't telling me where to go to actually, like, you know, download it from scratch. Uh, and it kind of just rendered, you know, I mean, there's a lot of stuff you can do with those maps, of course. But at the end of the day... I have some very specific uses, as I'm sure any other reporter would, and so I need to be able to do this myself uh, and these various, on these very specific maps. So that's what we're going to be going over today. I am going to make some assumptions that uh, this is not for beginners. I, I, I'm not going to go through how I clean the tables. Um, my hope is that by the end of the video, um, I will identify all of the, the key... Um, the key things that you'll need to make the plot so that if you have at least a CSV, you'll know, oh, okay, this is what I need to do to connect these files and go from there. So I generally do like to do a step-by-step -step thing, but otherwise this would be a half an hour video and we're just not going to do that. So we're going to get started now with Plotly. Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and load in... Uh, the libraries that we'll be using here, um, we're going to import GeoPandas as GPD, uh, we're going to import Pandas as PD, import uh, JSON, and finally import Plotly.express as PX. And here we go. So first thing I want to do is I actually I want to read in the map that I'm going to end up doing. Um, town map GPD dot read file uh, read file and this is under TL and let's take a quick look at that good now all I need is the geo ID which we'll be renaming that later geometry make sure this looks good okay town map one equals that uh, I'm going to read in my um, data now, which I've already cleaned up, but it is the uh, median, renter uh, uh, median renter salary um, table from the U.S. Census, uh, which I've already cleaned and put into a file called main tables. And we'll take a look what that looks like. So now we have our FIPS. There's a name LSAD, which was originally in the town map column, but I already cleaned it, like I said. And the median renter wage. Now we're ready to start merging. So, before we uh, start merging here, I am going to uh, go ahead and change something in the town map file. Uh, <coughs> here we go. So, the GOID, uh, we aren't going to need that, but we, we want to change that to FIPS, but we also want to add the string to it. Because this string will prevent the GOID column from being read as an integer by mistake. There we go. And we can go ahead and do town map one uh, FIPS. And then I'm going to drop columns equals GOID and in place. Oh. Oh. <laughs> in place equals true. There we go. Town map one. Excellent. And then we will go ahead and we're going to send that to GeoJSON now because our um, uh, Plotly is not going to recognize a Geo data frame as in a Geo Pandas um, setup. So we need to have a, a, G a JSON file ready to go. And GeoJSON. And. All right, so this does take a moment, but there we go. All right, so next, uh, just real quick, I'm just going to double check, and we're going to do a quick merge on town map one, the geodata frame. We're just going to make a quick static uh, plot. Um, plot equal uh, column equals median renter wage. Let's copy and paste it here. 
Okay. Good. Okay. So this is what we can do with GeoPandas, um, but the problem is, of course, we can't click on it, we can't hover, There's, it's just a chart, and that's fine if you're working on your own stuff and, you know, you don't need to try and explain this to somebody else, but I'm in a situation now where I'm in a newsroom and I need to say, hey, I think we need to look at, at this uh, thing here. Um, here's a static chart it is not always the best way. It, it gets the visual across, but there's a lot more questions that can come up that unless you know how to use you know Python or go through these files or use Jupyter Notebook you're not going to get the answer. You know, I, I have to tell you you can't go looking it up on your own and I wanted to sort of um, uh, eliminate that problem with an interactive uh, graphic and that's where the plot leaves come in and now we're ready to move on to actually making our, our figure. Okay so before we can um, go into our, our uh, plot leaf, we need to use JSON to um, read the map file that we just wrote with open uh, let's see here main GeoJSON that should be in quotation marks as in file I need to double check that I type that up correctly real quick ah uh, yes of course did miss R we need to make sure that it reads not writes and there we go. And we're going to save this as PA Cities JSON equals JSON dot load uh, in file. And now, now we are ready for our plot. Okay, so now we start plotting. Uh, first thing we need to do is put fig equals px dot Corepleth map box. Our main file is going to be f1, that's our data, and we're going to assign a geojson to pa cities.json. We're going to assign locations to FIPS, and this was key. If you're using a built in map, then location should work no matter what, um, like a built in plotly map uh, for counties, say, um, and um, yeah, plenty of tour. tour <laughs> Plenty of tutorials uh, focus on that, but the thing that I was missing was the feature ID key, which is properties FIPS in this case, and it wouldn't um, uh, actually load the map otherwise. Uh, after that, um, I uh, let's see here. Well, we need the range color. Well, just one second. There we go. Okay. Right, we need to assign the color first to the median renter wage column. Uh, and we need to do a hover name under name LSAD. And I'm going to do after that a range color, which is going based on, we're going to make our minimum value uh, the median renter wage column dot describe function call the first line which is the average and we're going to subtract that from the second line which is the standard deviation and that's going to be our low value and our high value is going to be this exact same formula only we're going to add the standard deviation I just got really paranoid that it wasn't recording for one second there okay comma and let me go ahead and move this over here uh, oh, oh you know what I think I put the comma in the wrong spot there I did comma there we go uh, all right so range color after that um, we are going to assign it a uh, map box style and in this case it's going to be cardo positron I'm going to set the color continuous scale at uh, one's called uh, Viridis. Make sure I spell that correctly. V I R I D I S. Good. We're going to do the zoom at 6.3. So when it first loads, that is where we will um, uh, set it. That's where the uh, map will focus on, the zoom level. The center, I uh, went to Google and I just looked for a map in Pennsylvania, clicked on the center and took the uh, coordinates from that. 
uh, and we will set the opacity at 0 0.5. And finally, in order to make it work, we have to do figure.show. And this should work. We will keep our fingers crossed. Okay, so I am going to cut here um, because it's going to take a minute. Um, so just a real quick jump. There we are. So, you can see it's a little bit different from that one. I think that one's using like purples, but anyway, we have our color bar and we can see it all just by looking at it. And I don't know if this is going to show up in the video, unfortunately, but as you hover over it, you should be able to see all of the um, names and everything. Uh, you see the FIPS number, the mean renter wage there was zero. Um, the meet renter rage over in Keating Township was 34,375. Uh, and um, yeah, now you can uh, go over this and you can actually say, okay, well, here it is, and here's what the colors actually mean, not just by the color bar on the side, but go ahead and float over your own towns and see what's going on. Uh, and uh, yeah, it should be, this is good. <laughs> I like it. Um, but uh, I hope that, that worked. I hope that that was pretty clear and concise for everybody. And we'll move on to um, making everything a little bit leaner for our GitHub repository and our binder next. Uh, so anyway, thank you for watching. I hope it was helpful.